I'm sitting here with Rob Stevenson in his Atlanta studio. Uh, vocalist extraordinary, vocal coach extraordinary to the stars. And uh, just want to introduce yourself, Rob, and uh, tell us a little bit about some of the people that you have worked with on tour and currently vocal coaching, as well as some of the different things that you're doing in the industry right now. You're making some noise. I hear your name mentioned a lot right now, so yeah, you got God. it. Praise God for that. Well, um, some of the people that I've been blessed to work with, um, uh, Justin Timberlake, um, background singer for Justin Timberlake, vocal arranger for Justin Timberlake, what they would call the lead vocalist. So my job is, my job title or responsibility is to make sure all the arrangements for the show sounds right, the singers are right, and the harmonies are right for whatever he needs. And also vocal coach for the 2007 Future Sex Love Show Tour with Justin Timberlake. Um, I'm currently coaching Kelly Rowland uh, on the Here I Am album, and she's in the studio working on a new album right now. Working with Rihanna, coached her throughout um, her her tour last year and right now getting ready to prep her for the Diamonds tour um, that's coming up next year starting in March she, uh, the tour starts in North America and uh, while coaching her last year we did the Talk That Talk album as well well I was coaching her you know prepping her for that while touring at the same time um, uh, oh my gosh um, behind the scenes or special projects with Justin Timberlake and the Justin um, and Friends show, once again, my job title was to do the arrangements for all the acts that um, either came in and performed with us in Vegas from Lady Antebellum, Rihanna, Leona Lewis, uh, Lionel Richie, uh, 50 Cent, you know, a lot of artists. What was some of the things on the road that for a vocalist, a vocalist would have to be aware of? Well, I think the biggest thing is is discipline, first of all. I mean, it's easy to get caught up in the the limelight of who the star is, and the star is the artist. But you're there to, to serve a purpose. As, as far as being a singer, um, I like playing like the guitar or any other, you know, like keyboards and stuff like that. The chances of a singer's voice going out, you know, partying, staying out late, not resting, not warming up before doing the shows, not cooling down after the shows. It can take a toll on a singer's voice, especially when you're working with superstar artists that are touring constantly and are doing four to five shows a week, two hours, uh, two hour sets. And that may not seem like a lot, but when you're dancing and jumping around and singing, and then you add to that the extracurricular activities afterwards, maybe go to a club where it's smoky, dry, all types of things that may prohibit it. Diet is another thing. Eating certain foods could agitate the cords, causing acid reflux, which the fumes or the undigested uh, food in your stomach builds into acid. And the acid, if it isn't digested and passed through uh, your intestines properly, it comes back up and it scorches your vocal cords. So therefore, it can lead into a singer being sick, hoarse, or even developing nodules. So I know that I, I just said a mouthful, but it's a lot. You have to be disciplined when out on the road. And once again, if you're a singer, that is your instrument, and that's how you get paid. And if you can't play your instrument, you're pretty much useless out on the road. Yep. Might as well go and go home, or they're going to send you home. So right. that will replace you real quick. Right. I didn't realize that, um, you know, are you also, uh, along with arranging and mm -hmm. writing and all other things you do, you're a vocal coach. Yep. And... Um, through earlier conversation with you, I didn't realize the science that's behind this yeah. whole thing. There's a lot to it. Yeah, it is. Well, we actually, you know, this particular method, you know, uh, that I do, I actually picked it up from a lady by the name of Robin Wiley, who was actually the vocal coach for a lot of the artists on the Mickey Mouse Club, including Justin Timberlake, J.C. Chazé, and, um, and in sync, and a lot of other many talented people. And when I started working with Justin, I got to meet and work alongside of her, or with her, well, on the Justified tour from 2002 to 2004, slash 5-ish, with some spot dates. And um, it was amazing just to see how she did what she did. And after her passing in 2006, you know, I was already seeking other knowledge through a friend of mine named Dave Stroud and the organization called Speech Level Singing, which dealt with singing of all types of genres of music, 
but they kind of dove a little deeper as far as the anatomy of how the vocal cords and the voice is structured to be able to sing healthier or sing easier. So basically it's just like having a personal trainer for singers. And by me doing that, working alongside doctors, you know, as far as rehabilitating some of those singers with a series of exercises and drills in order for them to be able to sing correctly and last longer while, while performing out on stage. So it is extremely important. Um, it has helped me with the clients that I have, that I've been blessed to have in this industry and being, given that I have that extra knowledge and with me being a singer first before being a technician, I can merge both of those things together and help other artists be better singers in the industry. Yeah. That's great and uh, you got a great voice and uh, have you ever done any gospel, any, anything in church, anything? You know what, my roots started in the church. You know, in fact, it started with my mom hitting me upside the head saying, you going <laughs> to sing or else, basically. <laughs> and at that point, she, my mother saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And my mother is a singer, my father is a singer, but my mom, she did it professionally with the Florida Mass Choir. And my sister did it too, Diane, who was actually a drummer for the Florida Mass Choir, for those of you that know or, 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 or have dealt with choirs back in the day. Florida Mass Choir, Georgia Mass Choir, Detroit Mass Choir. It was awesome back then before we got these praise teams. We need to bring some of that back anyway. But um, to make a long story short, my roots started in the church. I uh, was singing in choir, in the church choir, which led into me leading songs. And then the rest is history. I just fell in love with it from there on out. Next thing you know, I was wanting to sing in anything that had anything to do with singing in school. From the chorale, from... Um, doing ensembles and going around doing um, caroling all of that stuff was just amazing for me I absolutely loved it and that helped me in this developmental process to help me get to where I am today but a lot of it had to do once again with my mother uh, people speaking into me speaking life positivity I remember my chorus teacher in middle school Miss Garrett my cho choir teacher in high school Dr. David Martin who used to let me and a girl by the name of Cassandra O'Neill, who now plays for Prince, work with Pink and a lot of other people in the industry. Nobody made us go to the chorus room and sit down and jam out and learn more about music. We were just passionate about it. We wanted to do it. So like now, some of my kid, my clients, you know, the parents are like, you know, they'll come in and I could hear if they've been practicing. If they're improving based on their goals, if they're not achieving those goals, I can hear it. If they're not doing the things that I ask them to do, I can hear it. Come on, you can't fool me. I can hear <laughs> when you, you're doing what you're supposed to do. And if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, we have a long conversation and I sit down and talk with you. If you're really serious about it, I'm here to work with you. If you're not, you're out of here. Simple as that. But for me, nobody ever told me, except for my mom in the beginning, you know, that you need to sing. But the rest is history. I would sing on street corners. You know, and not just for money, but because other guys, they wanted to sing too, and other people wanted to sing. Talent shows, I was there. I didn't have no booking agent, but that's what I was doing. You know what I'm saying? And then somebody saw me, and they saw how bad I wanted to sing. Not be a star, but how bad I wanted to sing, and the love and the passion that I had for it. And somebody recognized that, and I was actually out on the street practicing for a talent show or a pep rally. It was a pep rally. And um, a friend by the name of Tyrone Wilson, who was actually the brother of a guy named Rod Wilson, who was the backup singer, him and his wife Anita Wilson, uh, that's a lot of Wilsons, <laughs> they were backup singers for Gloria Estefan. And Rod, Ty Wilson gave me my first opportunity to sing in the studio. So the moment I got in the studio and heard what my voice really sounded like, and I know that's weird, you think I'll be able to hear my voice being that I'm talking all the time. But when I was in the studio, I actually got to hear what my voice sound like on a brand new song that was nobody ever heard that I wrote or me and my friends we wrote together. I, I, I knew then, along with some other situations, that this is what I was born to do. It's great. It's great information. Let me ask you this. What, for somebody that uh, thinks that they want to sing and wants to be in this music industry, mm -hmm. uh, what would you suggest they do to improve themselves? Uh, would, should they start off with a teacher? Should they just go on their own? I mean, people take different roads to get to the same place, but... Well, 
you know what the thing I would say is that <laughs> it's like me I'm out of shape my physical body is but if I want to run a marathon or, or do one of those big races I know I'm gonna have to get a personal trainer I'm gonna have to eat right and get a dietitian so I can get a get on a better eating plan I'm gonna get with a personal trainer to get my endurance right or ready for that situation and what I think is right may not be right for me so I'm gonna get with a professional that knows better or knows how to deal with a situation like that better than I do and what I'm saying in order for me to have success in this marathon and what I'm saying if you want to be a singer get with a coach that understands the voice you know I mean if you are you know once again any coach you know would be cool but get with a, for me, I had a problem with getting with a coach that couldn't sing. I'm like, how are you going to teach me how to sing and you can't sing? You know, <laughs> it's just like getting with a guitar player that don't play guitar. Well, do you ever play guitar? No, I play Guitar Hero. <laughs> right. It's not the same, you know what I'm saying? But my point is, is you got to get with somebody that really knows the mechanics of, um, of singing and understand it and preferably get with a coach that sings as well that knows the technical aspects you know what I'm saying you can find a great singer that think they know how to coach and they can teach you some bad habits based on what they sound like you know and you got you can't do that because your voice is never going to sound like theirs and you can wind up injuring yourself just like athletes and when you're singing you are a vocal athlete whether you like it or not the other thing is get involved with everything you possibly can when it comes to singing or music you know what I'm saying if you like pop music, go outside the box and study country and see why it's so successful, why it's still selling or outselling a lot of the other markets than, you know, today than ever before. You know what I mean? So get outside the box and study singers, successful singers, one hit wonder singers. That, that, that means singers that have had a hit record and you never heard anything. Find out what they're doing. You know, not, not to look down on them, but to see why that song was successful at the same time. And if you are a singer, I know majority of you come up with melodies. Sometimes you may think that your melodies aren't good enough, but that's not true. And one way to actually kind of hone those skills or make those skills even better is by studying big songwriters. David Foster, Babyface, well, Kenny Babyface, uh... Edmonds. Mm -hmm. uh, look up L.A. Reid and see what he's done in the music industry besides uh, X Factor. He's done major things in the world of entertainment. Uh, look up Diane Warren. Her, her, her singing catalog is worth $1.2 billion for Ooh. a reason. You know, so do your research. And in a day and time where you, it's hard to find major libraries or local not libraries, you got the internet. You have a wealth of information where you can just sit there and YouTube performers of the past, study to show yourself approved. You know what I mean? And that's how you become better. You got to be a student of the game. I remember when I started coaching singers, a friend of mine told me, "Look, within a year, try and coach a thousand people, whether they pay or not." And I'm like, "Well, what if a thousand people don't pay? How am I going to take care <laughs> of my family?" He was like, it'll all work itself out. I'm like, no, it won't. These lights are going to get turned <laughs> off. He was like, well, whatever you can get from them, you know, as far as your service, you'll get to train your ear to hear different voices. You'll hear similarities in certain voices and know how to fix them faster. And at that point, when I got past 500, I stopped counting. And people just kept rolling in, just kept coming. And for me, even before then, if when I was just coaching people off of a CD and, and coaching them, the, doing style coaching, you know, if I hadn't done that, when Justin asked me to, to fill the shoes of the great Robin Wiley, who's great in my eyes, I, I, I would have cracked on the pressure if I wasn't ready for that moment. And my formula I live by is preparation plus opportunity equals success. What does that mean? The more prepared you are for any given situation, that when an opportunity presents itself, you'll be ready to handle it and you won't crack under pressure, no matter what the circumstances is, and the end result will be success, whether you get the job or not.
You've gone past the 500 mark, well past the 500 mark with the voice to the app, and we're going to get some information on that as well. Uh, that can substitute. I tried it myself. Uh, I am the worst singer. I think <laughs> I have fun with it. I mean, I'm not trying to be a singer, so, you know, but it's, it's a great app. I know it's had rave reviews from Apple, and it's up there, and, and it can be downloaded. Yeah. On, uh, you can actually visit us on uh, www.voicetutorapp.com or www.singoutloud.com or www.kamarproductions.com and um, find us on the web. You can download the app. It's $4.99, people. Yeah, it's nice if we could get rich off of it. That's great, but that's not what our goal was. It was simply to help singers, you know, or give singers a tool to have when they really, really needed it. And then also, to if someone wanted to contact you as a vocal coach, what, how would they contact you? Oh, you can you can find me on the web at www.kamadproductions. That's K-I-M-A-D Productions. dot com, or you can look you can Google me at Robert Rob. That's capital R, capital A, lowercase A, lowercase B, Stevenson, S-T-E-V-E-N-S-O-N. Great, man. Thank you so much for inviting me into your home and giving this information and tips and all this great stuff here. So, thanks a lot. We out.